Okay, so this is the ultimate cure for boredom. I'm going to show you how to transform your Android phone or tablet into the ultimate retro gaming machine capable of playing tens of thousands of your retro gaming favorites. Fire up your Android phone or tablet because you're about to level up your setup. For this demonstration, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra and I'll pair the ultimate Bluetooth controller from Stone Age Gamer with it. But no matter whether you're using a phone or tablet, as long as you have access to Android and the Google Play Store, you're good to go. I have the tablet in dock mode so that I can use the trackpad and the pointer to give you a better sense of where I'm tapping on the screen moving forward. First of all, you'll need to access the Google Play Store. In this example, it's right here on the home screen of the device. So I'm gonna tap on Google Play Store to open it. Inside Google Play Store, you'll need to search for RetroArch. Go up to the top left corner, tap in the search bar, and then type in RetroArch. What you'll find is there are actually two different versions of RetroArch available for download here. The first one is labeled RetroArch and it's for 32-bit devices. There's also a version called RetroArch Plus. This is for 64-bit devices like this S8 Ultra tablet. Tap on the version that matches your device, in this case, the 64-bit version of the software. Then come up to Install and tap on Install to download and install RetroArch to your device. It should only take a moment to download the program to your device and get it installed and ready to go. Once the program's installed, you'll see a play button appear. I recommend that rather than clicking play at this point, that you just swipe up with three fingers from the bottom of the device and then click close all to close out any open applications before you proceed. This will free up any additional RAM that you can get from closing out applications that are running in the background unnecessarily. RetroArch comes with virtual controls on screen pre-installed, but you can also pair a physical controller and use it inside RetroArch. To do this, tap on the settings icon. To the right side of the menu, you'll see a listing for Bluetooth. If it's not already turned on, tap the slider on the right side of the screen to turn on Bluetooth. Then tap on the Bluetooth menu listing to take a look at the available devices that are discoverable from Bluetooth. Wow, I really do have a lot of smart light bulbs, don't I? In the case of this ultimate Bluetooth controller from 8BitDo, it's a simple pairing process. Just press the button at the top center to turn it on, and you'll see a recessed circular button at the top. Press and hold that button in, and the slow flashing on the top button will change to a fast flash, just like this. That means the controller's in pairing mode. You can get this controller at the link in the video description. You won't see the pointer here for just a moment, but here's what happened. Just tap on the listing for your controller, in this case, Pro Controller. It will attempt to pair and ask you for permission to pair your controller. Down at the bottom of the screen, tap on pair, and your controller will now be paired with your Android device. Again, to keep that RAM freed up, I'm gonna swipe with the three fingers from the bottom up, and then tap on close all to close out any open applications and keep the RAM available for emulation. We'll need to launch RetroArch for the first time for it to be able to set up some key folders that you'll need access to in just a moment. Navigate to the RetroArch or RetroArch Plus application icon and then tap on it to select it to launch the software for the first time. You'll be presented with this jarringly bright screen, so I'm going to change the contrast on this so we can have a better look. For RetroArch to be able to load your game content, you'll have to give it permission to access your device's storage. So in this case, I'm going to tap on OK here and you'll see a confirmation prompt appear. At the confirmation prompt, Select Allow to give RetroArch or RetroArch Plus access to your device's storage. You'll see some notifications appear on screen the first time you launch RetroArch, and then you'll be at the main menu. Using the trackpad and the pointer, I noticed something kind of unusual inside the RetroArch main menu. If you try to scroll up and down using the two finger method and then use a single finger to navigate the pointer, what happens is the pointer kind of gets locked to the menu and it will force the menu to scroll up and down even when you don't want it to. See how it's kind of just moving on its own? So at this point, I'm kind of gonna have to abandon the pointer inside the RetroArch menu and just use touch. But what I'll do is I'll tell you every single time that I'm gonna to touch something inside the menu just to make things a little easier to follow along with. First up, let's download some key online updates required for RetroArch. From the main menu, locate the listing here that says Online Updater and tap on it. You'll need to download the cores or emulators that match the content you plan to use, but we'll take a look at that in just a moment. First up, select the listing that says Update Core Info Files by tapping on it. It takes just a moment to download and extract them. 
Next up, come down to the listing that says Update Assets and tap on it. Again, this is a pretty quick download and extract process. Next on the list, come down to the listing for Update Controller Profiles and tap on it to select it. This is another one that zings by in the blink of an eye. Okay, maybe not that fast, but pretty fast. Optionally, you can come down to the listing for Update Cheats and tap on it to select it. Hey, you know me, no judgments here. Just be aware that the process takes several minutes in real time to download and extract to your device. You might have noticed that it kicked the menu back to the online updater main menu while it was extracting the cheats file. If this happens, all you have to do is go back to the online updater main menu and just tap on it again to go back to the online updater. Now let's see, where were we? Oh yeah, we had just finished downloading the cheats file. Okay, next up on the list, come down to the listing that says update databases and tap on it. Once again, this should be a very quick download and extract process to your device. In fact, everything else moving forward in the online updater works pretty fast. Next up on the list is to come down to the listing for update overlays and then tap on it. The last thing that you need to download here is the listing that says update GLSL shaders by tapping on it. Again, lightning fast stuff here. As this finishes up, there's one more listing here and it's turned on by default. It says On Demand Thumbnail Downloads. You can leave this on if you'd like the system to download box art for your installed games. Once you're done, press the back arrow in the top left corner of the screen. Press the home button in the right navigation pane. This will take you back to the main menu of RetroArch. For now, you're done with RetroArch setup. Just go ahead and swipe from the bottom with three fingers and then hit Close All to close out RetroArch. Okay, so if you've got an Android tablet, you probably have a micro SD card slot and you can just slap your content right on the SD card. However, if you have a Galaxy phone, for example, you don't have a native micro SD card in the device most likely. So here's a way around that to be able to transfer your content to your phone. You can download the game files and system BIOS files directly to your device, or you can connect it over USB to your computer and transfer them over, which is what I'll do here. So I'm gonna connect a USB cable to the Samsung Galaxy Tab and to the computer. You'll see a pop-up appear at the bottom of the screen asking you to allow USB access to the device. Come down to allow and tap on it. Over on your PC, this will mount the storage for your device as an accessible drive inside File Explorer. So just go to this PC and you'll see that there's now a listing here for the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. Double click into it and you'll see that it's now mounted as a drive just like any other type of drive connected to your computer. Double click on the drive and you'll see that you now have access to the folders on your device's storage. I like to move things from left to right. So what I'm gonna do is take this window which is gonna be the destination drive and I'm gonna drag and drop it over to the right side of the screen and snap it into place. I have ROM files and BIOS files pre-saved on my computer in a folder called Demo. So I'm going to go back to File Explorer, right-click on it, and open the Demo folder. This window I'm going to take over to the left side of the screen and snap it into place. You'll need two things for the cores inside RetroArch to work correctly. The first one is you're going to need game files or ROMs. In this case, I actually have them in .zip format and they're saved in their own individual system folders. You're also going to need what are called BIOS files. They're system files that some cores are going to need in order to work correctly inside RetroArch. So I have a system folder here. I have Atari Lynx as one of the systems and ROMs specifically because it requires a system BIOS file to work correctly. So it makes a great test candidate to make sure RetroArch can recognize everything that's been copied over. Since everything's been set up, it's super easy to get everything copied over at this point to your device. Because you've already run RetroArch, you're going to find a subfolder on your device's storage called RetroArch. Locate that folder and then double click into it. Inside this folder, you're going to find a folder called Downloads. That's where you should store your game content or your ROMs. So in this case, I'm going to grab the ROMs folder and then just drag and drop it directly into the Downloads folder. It's perfectly fine to keep the ROMs in subfolders. RetroArch will be able to scan for them in just a moment. Next up, you'll find an already existing subfolder called System. You can either just drag and drop your System BIOS files directly into this folder or override it. In this case, I'm going to go into the System folder just so you can see that there is in fact a BIOS file here and then just take this BIOS file and drag and drop it into the pre-existing System folder on the Galaxy tab. Okay, so that's everything you have to do to transfer files to your device. You can transfer over to your phone or tablet for the remainder of the guide. 
Disconnect the USB connection from your device. Back on your phone or tablet, go ahead and relaunch RetroArch or RetroArch Plus from your device's home screen. Remember how I mentioned earlier that we would come back to downloading cores? Since a lot of phones don't have expandable storage, it's kind of at a premium, so downloading unneeded cores takes up space that you could use for other things. To get the cores you need, tap on Online Updater, then tap on the Core Downloader. You'll see a list of cores separated out by platform. Since we're going to need a core to test out Atari Lynx so that we can test both ROMs and the system BIOS files, I'm going to scroll down a bit until we get to the Atari listings, and you'll see that there are two cores available for the Atari Lynx here. One of these is called Beetle, and the other is called Handy. I'll tap on Beetle to download it to the system. You'll see a confirmation message appear at the bottom of the screen indicating that the core is being installed. I also went ahead and downloaded cores here for Nintendo NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, and Sega Genesis. Once you have the cores downloaded, tap the back arrow in the top left corner of the RetroArch screen. There are two ways you can launch games in RetroArch. The easiest one is to create playlists by importing them. To do this, over in the right navigation section, tap on the icon with the three bullet points and the three lines next to it. This opens up the playlist menu. The first listing inside the submenu is called Import Content. Tap on it to select it. You'll need to tell RetroArch where your game content is located. To do this, tap on the first listing inside this submenu called Scan Directory. The first directory listing is for the RetroArch subfolder inside your device. Tap on that to select it. Inside the RetroArch folder, look for that Downloads folder where you copied your ROM content previously. In this case, it's right here. Tap on it to select it. This is the folder you need to scan. So to do this, come down to the listing that says Scan This Directory and tap on it. Since there are only a handful of games here, it will only take a moment to scan and import the games to the playlists. Once you've imported your content, tap the Home button on the right side of the screen to go back to the main menu. Now that you have your content imported, you can access its playlists. Go back over to the right side of the screen and tap on the three dots with the three lines to open up the playlist menu. Scroll down in this section and you'll now see that your content has been organized by console. This is really cool because it saves you from having to load games one at a time. For this example, we're going to test out Atari Lynx. So I'm going to go to the Atari Lynx playlist here and tap on it. You can see that the game is preloaded here and ready to go. Take note that the actual box art is missing even though the online thumbnail updater was turned on and I suspect it's just a difference between the names of the game ROMs and what the system was looking for. To launch your game from the playlist, tap on it. The first listing here is called Run. Tap on Run to start the game. RetroArch will suggest a core to use with the ROM. In this case, it properly chose Beetle as it's the downloaded core for Lynx. So I'm gonna tap on Atari Lynx Beetle here. With the core now selected, tap Run again and your game will start right away. Two things to take note of here. First of all, the virtual controls are automatically turned on by default and shown on screen. There are two main buttons that you need to be concerned with in the bottom right corner of the screen. The first one is the circle with the Space Invader in the middle. This is the RetroArch menu button. If you tap this, it will take you out of the game and take you to the RetroArch main menu in-game. From here, you can restart your game, close your game, take screenshots, and even load and save states. Also, if you have a physical controller paired with your device, you can close out the virtual controls by tapping the down arrow in the bottom right corner of the screen. So what about if your game doesn't show up in the imported games playlist? For example, like my homebrew title Raven's Core. It runs on the Game Boy emulators, but it doesn't show up in the import section because it's a homebrew title. From the main menu, select Load Content. You'll be asked to choose the location where your content is saved on your device. This is why we put the ROM files in a folder called Downloads. If you look right here, there's a folder called Downloads, and it's super easy to get your content from here. Just tap on Downloads. You'll be taken to the folder that has your game content. Remember, in this case, it's under a subfolder called ROMs. So I'm going to tap on ROMs here. I'm looking for a Game Boy game, so I'll come down to Game Boy and tap on it. And there's the game Raven's Core. To load the game, come down to it and tap on it. There's an extra step here to either browse the zip archive or just load the archive. Come down to load archive and tap on it. Also, just in case you're prompted, remember to select a core that matches the game system type of game that you have loaded. By the way, you can download your free copy of this game from my website at the link in the video description.
Playing these games through RetroArch is an amazing way to enjoy your retro gaming favorites. But there's also another way you can go about this. You can play the games natively from your device's browser. This video shown on screen and linked in the description and pinned comment will show you how it's done. I'll see you over there.